sponsored by Envato Elements. In this video, I'll be taking your submitted photos and turn them into anything I feel like. Whether it's subtle, dramatic, adorable, or badass, I'll do my best to turn your images into more than just images. Welcome to editing your photos. Ladies and gentlemen, for today we've got some pretty sweet photos. And remember, if you want to send yours for the next episode, make sure to send it to editingyourphotos at bennyproductions.net. And for now, let's get into the first one. Hi there, Katie here. I hope these pictures of my Matt Hatter slash steampunk dress up will get your creative juices flowing. Thanks. When I saw this, I instantly saved it because obviously there's a ton of potential here. Let's fire up Photoshop and see what we can do. As usual, we'll begin with cutting her out using the pen tool because the best quick selection could do was this. The idea is to put her in a mystical forest with some animals here and there, with kind of an Alice in Wonderland vibe, because, you know, that's pretty much what she was going for. I put a tree stump directly under her butt, so it looks like she's sitting on it. The scaling actually looked lovely, and I made sure to integrate it with the grass and plants below. The background image is kind of dark and hazy and dead looking, so I used Camera Raw to quickly add some contrast and vibrance to it. I adjusted the tree stump to that, mainly by adding some correct shadowing on it. Then, to add some depth in the background, I used the Neural Filter Blur right here. I set the focal point right about where the stump is, and well, instant background blur. Moving on. Even though I just got rid of the haze, I decided, well, you know, some, <laughs> some haze um, would actually be quite nice, so I added that. God, I suck. This image is cold as hell though, so I added some warmth using color balance. I'd increase this later, but first I wanted to blend in the subject with the landscape a bit better. You already guessed it, using shadows and highlights. In the background, I put some real nice romantic kind of warm vibes coming from behind because, well, vibes. And of course, adjusted the highlight color on her to that new tint. The tree stump also needed highlights, so I popped those in there. All done. To enhance the hazy kind of effect we've got going on, I'm applying some soft light bouncing off of her coat there. Now, wouldn't it be cool to have like a ton of ray lights? Light rays. That sort of thing. For that, I'm using my own light ray overlays. Check the link down below to get them for yourself. I put it in place and made sure it has the correct light color. I kind of made it go around her so it's not too messy all over. And well, that made it look real nice, didn't it? I think it does. Also, particles, once again, from my own overlay pack. I added some little light orbs and particles to it, and that's exactly the kind of stuff that really makes it come alive, I think. Now, for some animals, I definitely wanted to have, like, a little cute baby bear. So I cut one out and put it in there, and oh my god, that is so cute. I masked away some area so he's behind the tree stump with his paw kind of overlapping. And I corrected the lighting and the colors, just blending it in there. A teeny tiny bird on her shoulder seemed like a pretty fun idea as well. And later I'd also add a bunny on her lap, so I did the exact same things. Once again, what a surprise. some extra little details like more bunnies and even bees flying around with a final camera raw filter this is what it looks like I love the warmth of this image. I don't really do that often, so it's definitely something fresh, I guess. But before moving on, I first want to tell you why Envato Elements, the sponsor of today's video, is an absolute must. Today I'm actually going to give you some specific examples. As you may know, a big part of what I do relies on textures. So if you go to the graphics tab and then choose textures, there's a wide range of different ones, often even in packs. Think of rock, wood, leather, fabric, honestly, there's a ton. And that same thing goes for overlays. Search for those in the graphics tab as well. And 
there's plenty of stuff to choose from. Rain, snow, particles, lightning, fire. I feel like I pretty much always talk about the 3D section, but it is just, it's amazing. It's incredibly handy. But say you need a quick, nice looking title for something and you don't really have hours to spend on it. Then check out Photoshop add-ons. There's a bunch of templates. You can just pick one and change the text and kind of customize it. And well, there you go. It's little things like this that make life just a lot easier. And Envato Elements has everything in one place. For just $16 a month, you have yourself an annual subscription and unlimited downloads to whatever they have to offer. Link down below. And then now let's get on with the video. The next photo was sent by Ashish. Ashish. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> Hey Benny, I've seen a lot of your videos and became a big fan of your editing skills. You can edit this in whichever way you like. Very nice. Let's do something space related because that always works. Let's fire up Photoshop again. First, I want to add some cool kind of planets behind him. And I want that to look unique. So let's work on that first. I took this Mars planet and applied some dynamic lighting from the top. This mostly just makes it look less flat. I added a few different layers of light to get the best effect. And well, time to do something cool. I dropped in this giant chasm on top and used warp to make sure it's got that rounded shape of the planet below. Once done, I faded out the edges and well, you can see where this is going. I wanted this to be a partly destroyed planet, so I put a bunch of rock holes in there and caves to give it that effect. Once I had it all in place, I began blending everything together. It's mostly adding the orange color, of course, but it's super important the lightness matches as well. This is mainly just tweaking the colors, making little adjustments and making sure the overall lighting is consistent. All of this was actually a lot less work than I expected, so that is definitely a relief. Some extra little details I thought could look nice are some asteroids, or rather parts of the planet that's been destroyed. I made sure they have the exact same color as the rocks of the planet, and well, that looks pretty cool. Then for the big event, let's have the planet's core be visible within that kind of hole. I warped a lava texture in place and adjusted the colors to make it look very warm and intense. Right away, I put some glow on it and added some extra lights here and there. I made sure it's also visible in the second crack on the left and even made some extra lava details near the core to really, really spice this whole thing up. I let the light shine through on the right here and painted light on the asteroids accordingly. Some final glow on top and well, that all came together quite nicely, quite fast. Definitely more special than just another moon. Right? <laughs> now for the guy, I got rid of the background in the original image and well, there's our planet again. I rotated it slightly for a better composition and made sure to add some stars in the background already. On top of the planet, I put some little glow effects and well, now it's time for the next big thing the background sky. I love the idea to have a big contrast between blue down below and orange red on top. I faded out this sky towards black and began painting the right bluish highlight at the bottom of the planet using the same technique from earlier. Now, of course, this chap has to be a lot darker, but most of all, more bluish. So I made sure to do that as well. The next logical step is to kind of blend him in there better using highlights and lighting in general. So I did not waste any time. for some slight fixes. Beginning with a little white bloom near the horizon there always looks nice. And the planet we made needed a bit more blue in the shadows, I noticed. Now the last elements I want to add are some more planets, actually. Ones that are all lined up with each other. This quickly became more of an artistic approach, as you'll see very soon. I blended the planets in there and just thought it looked cool to create lines that kind of represent the orbit or their path, so to speak. I figured it's easier to just show you instead of try to explain because it's kind of specific. <laughs> 
At last, a camera raw filter and that's the last step for this journey. I think those lines are quite unique and special compared to most other space stuff I do and I definitely want to experiment more with that in the future. All things considered, I do like it. So um, on to the next one. Hi Benny, I'm a big fan of yours. We've got some tanks laying around in the backyard. I hope you can turn this into a cool battlefield picture or actually just anything you can imagine. I know you're more creative than me so do your best. Mention my name in your video please to flex on my friends. It's Zakaria. Well, I guess you get to flex on your friends. Um, Battlefield coming straight up. And that, I guess, was the last one for today. Remember, if you want to see yours in the next episode, potentially, send it to editingyourphotos at bennyproductions.net. Don't forget to check out Envato Elements if you're interested, and then I guess for today, that is pretty much it. If you like this video, make sure to send it to your friends. What? I've never said that before. Well, I guess, I guess you can. Um, like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and then I hope I'll see you in my next video. What is happening? That was weird.